Hey, what's going on? Your man Diamond K in here. As always, the Diamond K Show on fire-tv.com. As you probably know, uh, OJ Simpson recently passed away. And uh, for those that don't know, 76 years old, uh, became infamous. He was already famous. And then he became infamous in 1994 after he was charged with killing his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. So those of you that remember this case, it took over everything that uh, was happening at that time. It dominated uh, the news. It dominated uh, TV, it dominated the papers, it dominated magazines. It was an ever-present thing uh, in the early 90s. So there was this eight-month nationally televised trial that was one of the, the uh, highest profile criminal cases in uh, American history modern American history. So uh, before the deaths, the former running back spent 11 seasons in the NFL playing only for the Buffalo Bills and the San Francisco 49ers. After that, he went into, uh, you know, advertising, doing commercials, uh, acting in, uh, in movies and, and the such. And he was beloved. He was, uh, one of uh, the biggest, you know, sports guys. Uh, his endorsements, crazy, crazy amounts of money he was getting for endorsements. And uh, he was the first uh, black athlete to have those those high profile, big number uh, endorsements. OJ Simpson was a big deal. Now, there was a death of two individuals. So you never want to lose sight of that uh, fact. So O.J. Simpson was acquitted of the charges that were brought against him. Now, I can't think of any other uh, you know, high-profile case where someone that was black was charged and acquitted of these murders like this. I can't, I can't think of another high profile case like this. And there have been many high profile cases where individuals other than black people were charged and acquitted and, and never the hysteria that uh, existed, uh, you know, after this OJ trial, after this OJ uh, acquittal. Uh, at the time of his death, his estimated net worth was around $3 million. And as I said, that the NFL career, the brand endorsements, uh, his uh, compensation as a sports commentator were his main sources of income. And, um, you know, uh, I guess you would estimate in today's currency, uh, maybe a sum of $18 million. Now, it was widely reported in 1992 that his estate in Brentwood, California, accounted for half of his wealth. At the time of the purchase of that property, OJ, OJ paid $650,000 in 1977 uh, money, and that is uh, close to $3, $3 million. So we talk about the money and uh, the income that OJ reportedly received. There was money made off of the book. You remember that book, Confessions of a Killer? According to reports, Simpson accepted 600 k to claim authorship of the book and to participate in an interview. OJ claimed to the Associated Press that any earnings from biographies he was subject 
uh, that he was the subject uh, of were blood money. He stated that he'd only been compensated to did I do it confessions of a killer in order to support his children and financially pay his debts. OJ was a complicated individual, uh, needless to say. Uh, he did not write If I Did It, Confessions of a Killer, the book. The book was written by screenwriter Pablo Fernandez, who claimed that it was based on an in-depth conversation with O.J. Simpson. So and a screenwriter sat down with O.J., did this long-form interview, and then created the book. Now, Simpson's uh, former manager asserted that Simpson was not engaged in the actual writing of the book. He was not involved in the composition of the book. Now, it has been frequently looked at that OJ was the writer of the book, but, but understand this. It is not unusual that celebrities, stars, um, individuals with influence have other people write books for them. This is not uh, strange. This is not uh, abnormal in the least. In 2007, the Goldmans released an updated version of the book that featured essays penned by OJ's ghostwriter, a member of a Goldman's legal team and other family members. So I, I'm sure that many of you are aware of the book, but necessarily did not read it. Uh, and in the book, If I Did It, Confessions of the Killer, it follows the supposedly hypothetical description of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman's murder. It's pretty dark. Now, for those that are uh, are willing to take this journey with me, we're going to go down memory lane a little bit. On June the 12th, 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman's uh, bodies, dead bodies were discovered. They had been stabbed. The two were stabbed in the neck head and torso area. A uh, very bloody crime scene, a very uh, horrific crime of passion. Police discovered their bodies just after midnight. OJ was tried for the murders, but was acquitted after a long trial. The double murder trial began on January 24th, 1995, and as I said earlier, it dominated media coverage. Dozens of news outlets and reporters covered the trial that was eventually dubbed as the trial of the century. Trial of the century. Uh, with the forthcoming trials of uh, many trials, criminal trials of Donald Trump. Uh, it, 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 it still has the, trial, the, the title of the trial of the century, uh, but we're going to see what happens. So, yeah, I, I just, I, I don't know. It, it was, thinking back, man, it was, uh, it was a, a, a very interesting time. Very interesting time. A lot of folks, you know, came to prominence being connected with this O.J. Simpson trial and acquittal. Now, I have to keep saying that. He was judged by a jury of his peers and acquitted. He assembled a dream team of attorneys because the guy had money. We talked about that. He had a lot of money. And he was able to put together the best defense. If you're able to put together a defense... It only makes sense that you do it, right? If you have the financial means to do it. But a lot of people look down on OJ for this. There was many um, allegations of violence in the marriage. OJ reportedly had a dark side. 
OJ was not the man that we saw in the public eye all the time. But who is? Who's the same all the time? Nobody. I'm sure that uh, even somebody like President Obama has a a dark side. You know what I mean? If if he can't find his lighter or his cigarettes, I'm sure that it, it could get dark in the Obama household. You know what I mean? Michelle, you've seen my lighter. Yeah, I, I can see he's getting upset. And, and, and things might get crazy. But that doesn't make Obama a murderer. That doesn't necessarily make OJ a murderer. Abusive? Was he? Definitely possible. I think that in many instances it was actually proven. I think that it was actually proven. Uh, And and so the football career, I want to go back to his football career briefly because this is what brought O.J. Simpson to the, the, uh, the loving arms of America, his football career. He played at the University of Southern California. He was selected in the 1969 NFL draft, spent 11 seasons in the league mostly with the Buffalo Bills. Now, understand this. He had a breakout college career, a record-breaking running back, became a dominant force in the NFL very quickly, won the MVP award in 1973, went on to play 135 games Simpson was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1985, his first year of eligibility. OJ was the man. He was the juice. He was the juice. You remember that commercial? He's running through the airport, jumping over stuff, trying to get to the uh, to the uh, uh, you know airplane, catch his flight. I've imitated that many times in airports, running late for a plane. O.J. Simpson was the first player to reach a rushing mark many thought could not be attained in a 14-game season when he topped 2,000 yards. O.J. was the man. O.J. was the man. And after his football career on the turf, He was a commentator. He was an interviewer. He was a a person that brands wanted to connect with. He did his thing. Uh, But as I said, things turned dark. Things turned dark for OJ Simpson. Things turned dark, um, I would say, rather quickly. O.J. Simpson died owing $100 million to murder victims, according to reports. $100 million to the families of Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown at the time of his death. So we're going to unpack this. This former athlete divided America. When you bring up the name O.J. Simpson, you have some folks that instantly get upset, feel like this guy got away with murder. This black man got away with murdering two white people. Oh, it upsets folks. Now, how many times have we seen white men get acquitted of murdering black people? people, and there's not that uh, attached to it. You know what I mean? Uh, George Zimmerman, you know, the black community is not rocking with George Zimmerman, but it's just totally different. The level of vitriol that is displayed at O.J. Simpson. I think that's a big part of the excessive amount of time that he got for going and getting his stuff back. In Las Vegas. Uh, But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. 
One of O.J. Simpson's former teammates has described how the late star's personality shifted once he entered the Hollywood world. Once he entered the Hollywood world, Bob Jensen, who spent two years playing alongside O.J. as a linebacker for uh, USC, said that after this Hollywood thing, his personality just changed. Somehow, some way, something changed in him and he snapped, is what he said. I remember seeing the Ford Bronco being chased by police on the news. You remember that? That was a very, uh, it was just interesting. It was, it was a, a very slow high-speed chase. As they, they, they called it at the time, they said it was a high-speed chase. Uh, and it, it seemingly went on, it seemingly went on forever. It seemingly went on forever. It was, uh, as, as many things uh, attached to OJ, it was a spectacle. It was a spectacle. OJ Simpson had a lot of uh, uh, controversial moments in his life. And uh, in his death, there is still going to be controversy because, as I said, O.J. died in debt. There is a legal battle coming with his estate. And uh, there was a, a judgment, a civil judgment, in which the families of Goldman and Nicole Brown received or, or were awarded $33.5 million after he was found liable in a wrongful death lawsuit in 1997. He was found liable. Now, the, the bar is much lower in civil. Donald Trump has been found liable to, to be a rapist. But many of the MAGA folks don't look at it like that. Now, these same folks will look at O.J. Simpson being found liable. Oh, and say, oh, yeah, he's, he's guilty, guilty, guilty. There is a stark difference in the way these folks are looked at, black and white. No other way around it. There's no, there's no, other, way to, there's no other way to spin it. There's no other way to spin it. So O.J. Simpson still owed a hundred million, more than a hundred million, uh, to these families at the time of his death, April tenth of twenty twenty four, following a cancer diagnosis. That is when O.J. finally uh, was freed. Yeah. Just tuning in, you listen to the Diamond K Show, of course, on Fire TV. Uh, you can. Always check us out on fire-tv.com. And uh, I am here. We're talking about O.J. Simpson, the juice, and how he divided America. How he divided America. Folks look at it totally different. Totally different. Now, I do want to say that interest has caused a lot of uh, the amount of money that he owes to increase. Interest. I mean, it's, it, it, I mean, it's true. It's true. They've been trying to get money from from him. The family did have a a win in court, obtaining the rights to a book. This is the the aforementioned "If I Did It" book. The family obtained the rights to that. He was making money off that. They were able to intercept and make some money off the sales of that book. And uh, it was uh, canceled, and then it was later released. It was interesting. O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson. Now, the families of the victims, I feel for them. I, I feel for the families 
of of the of the uh, the Goldman families and uh, Nicole Brown Simpson's families. I do. I think that O.J. Simpson probably knew had something to do with the deaths of uh, these individuals, his ex-wife and some guy. It's possible, but it's also possible that someone connected with Ron Goldman had something to do with it. That's possible. Um, But O.J. was acquitted. O.J. was acquitted. And a lot of folks say he was not acquitted because of his innocence. He was acquitted because of the dream team that was assembled. They say that OJ was not innocent. OJ was the beneficiary of great defensive attorneys. That's what they say. They say that it was not that he didn't do it. But in 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 reference to that, right? In reference to that, that's what happens. He, so he's, he's accused of stabbing and killing his ex-wife and this guy. That's what he was accused of. Now, there was evidence that tied him, made him a suspect. Now, he was instantly a suspect. Let me say that. He was instantly a suspect because he's the husband of the deceased. He had a temper, according to many folks. He was abusive, according to Nicole Brown Simpson. So the police zoomed in on him, made him the focus of their investigation, and the craziness began. Craziness began. O.J. Simpson, born July 9th, 1947, in San Francisco, California. For those that are um, wondering, O.J. Simpson's brain will not be donated to CTE research. Why am I bringing that up? Because it was suggested that O.J. Simpson suffered some CTE effects through his football career and that this caused some of the changes in personality that have been witnessed. It's interesting. It's, I mean, it's possible. We have seen a lot of uh, former players commit heinous acts. We've seen it. And, and we've seen that in other sports as well. But as I said, the O.J. Simpson estate is going to be fighting payouts. When they mention O.J. Simpson, they say a murderer, acquitted murderer. That stain is on him. Justified or not, that stain is there. The way that Americans, black and white, look at O.J. Simpson, depending on where you sit, O.J., was one of the most hated men in this country because many perceived him as getting away with murder. Now, are Americans so concerned with a guilty man, any man, going free? 
Or is America concerned with a so-called guilty black man going free? Now, many of you remember the infamous saying, I'm not black, I'm OJ. I heard recently a spin on that. What do I mean? Many in our community took that statement to mean I'm bigger than a black man. I'm in a, a, in a whole nother category. And that was an insult to many in our community. But I recently heard a reporter say who covered the Simpson investigation and, and subsequent trial by saying that OJ meant this is this is not about black or white. It's just about me specifically. And 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 he described it in a way that OJ was not trying to say that. I'm transcending or rejecting my race, but I'm just talking about me regardless of my race. It's just about me, right? And, and, and many folks can can take that, uh, uh, you know, however they want to take it, um, whether it is something good or whether it is something bad. But the way that OJ has been vilified Understandably, he was accused of murder, vilified by the families of the victims, completely understandable. But the juice, the juice, has he got a fair shake? I don't know. I don't know. But I, I do know this. I do know that others have been in his shoes, not as high profile, not as high profile. Two individuals, I, I, I'm not minimizing the loss of Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend, Ronald Goldman, who were brutally stabbed outside of her home in Los Angeles. I'm not faulting the police, no, no matter how botched their investigation was, no matter how racist the individuals who conducted it were. Simpson became the prime suspect after being notified of the impending charges on June 17th. There was that low speed pursuit by the police as he hid in the back of the Ford Bronco driven by his friend AC. Everybody needs a friend like AC. The attempted escape was nationally televised. A lot of things that OJ did were botched himself. The pursuit that ended at his home, the, the low the, the low speed pursuit, was seen by an estimated 95 million people. He was arrested and then charged with the murders. He pleaded not guilty and subsequently hired some prominent attorneys and the dream team led by Johnny Cochran handled his defense. Trial began in January and the media scrutiny was unprecedented. Proceedings were nationally televised. Millions watched it throughout the day. Now, there are many of these Trump cases that we're not going to be able to see. I'm just saying, a lot of differences. Prosecutors emphasize the domestic violence that occurred prior to and after the Simpsons' 1992 divorce. We've talked about a change in OJ. Former friends acknowledge this change. Friends of Nicole Simpson acknowledged this dark side of OJ. It was an omnipresent thing. OJ's defense was based largely on the grounds 
that evidence had been mishandled or planted and that members of the Los Angeles Police Department were racist. Now, that is a very interesting defense. It does not say necessarily that my client is innocent or he had an alibi or these type of things, although that was mentioned. But the focus was on what the police did wrong, as any good defense attorney should do, and that the police actually had motivation to frame OJ. So that's a very interesting defense. We have seen a lot of police officers get off on things. California was a hotbed for this. I only need to reference the Rodney King trial, the beating, the acquittal. Oh, there was no outrage in the white community. Now, yes, Rodney King did not die uh, as a result of that beating. But the point remains. The point remains. One of the prosecution's key pieces of evidence was a bloody glove allegedly found at Simpson's home. Bloody glove. The defense argued that the glove seemed too small for Simpson's hand, leading Cochran to say, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Very famous statement. If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. So after more than eight months of testimony, the case went to the jury. There was a lot of back and forth. October 2nd. The following day, Simpson was acquitted of the murder charges. Oh, it was massive. It was massive. Black community, for the most part, happy. White community, for the most part, angry. Angry. Whites were largely dismayed by the jury's decision. Largely the African-American community, we supported it. For far too long, we had seen police officers get off on killings, on beatings, on all kinds of things. For far too long, we had seen white Americans Get off on killing black people. When I say get off, I mean they were acquitted. So seeing OJ in this scenario, guilty or not, it seemed like a victory for black people. Now, as I said, the subsequent civil trial, 1997, OJ found liable for the deaths and... Uh, then there was that Las Vegas robbery, 2007. Simpson was arrested after he and several other men entered a hotel room in Las Vegas, took some memorabilia that Simpson claimed had been stolen from him. It was caught on videotape. OJ was uh, uh, charged with a number of crimes, including armed robbery and kidnapping. Oh, they weren't going to. They weren't going to lose this case. Cochran was no longer around. He could not put together the dream team or a dream team. In October 2008, jury found OJ naturally guilty on all charges. He was sentenced to a minimum of nine years with a possible maximum sentence of 33 years. He was granted parole in 2017. But America was not happy enough with that. It's not happy enough with that. Ironically, OJ said that he was staying, and this is after, OJ said that he was staying out of uh, California because he 
felt like he might encounter the actual murderer. He was scared. Oh, yeah. (laughs) OJ had some cojones, right? Or or he was distasteful. Uh, 2023, it was revealed that Simpson had been diagnosed with cancer. And, of course, he died the following year. Here we are. Here we are. So whether you feel that O.J. Simpson was guilty, whether you feel that he got away with murder, he's gone now. He O.J. is gone now. Uh, is America in a different place that they were in 1994? In a lot of ways, I say no. I, in a lot of ways, I say we are still the same country. With still the same uh, prejudices, with still the same double standards that we had in 1994, in 1964, in 1864. In a lot of ways, we are still the same. And the death of O.J. Simpson has allowed us the opportunity to re-examine some of these events. To re-examine some of our divisions in this country with regards to race, with regards to class, with regards to the haves and the have-nots. If O.J. Simpson was just a college player who had not reached the heights that he went on to reach, who had not been in movies, O.J. Simpson was just a college student found to be a suspect in the murder of his girlfriend and one of her friends. Same scenario, but doesn't have the money. The trial would have no doubt had a different result. So the money of OJ definitely played a fact here. He was able to assemble a dream team, as they called it. But why is it that individuals are not able to assemble dream teams in life when they don't have the money? Because this system is based on capitalism. You can buy innocence. You can. And if you look at the evidence of the case, some people are going to come to the conclusion that OJ was guilty. Some people are going to come to the conclusion that OJ was innocent. Bias can take you either way. But the bigger point that I'm trying to make, the question that I have is how can we continue to go on this path? And when are things going to truly be equal? That is a question. If you know the answer, I definitely want to hear it. DJ K, gmail.com, of course. Uh, all social media, I'm at the Diamond K Show. Um, I definitely want to send condolences to the family family and friends uh, of O.J. Simpson. Um, I, I definitely want to send condolences to the family and friends of Nicole Brown Simpson and, and Ron Goldman. Um, this was a tragedy for the country. Tragedy for uh, the families and uh, all of that. Um, we have to do better. We have to do better. And uh, it's not one button. It's not one button we can push that's going to fix all of this. Not one button. Uh, and it is, uh, it is definitely harder to do in the times that we live in. Uh, but, you know, we got to talk about it. We got to start having the conversations uh, and uh, and all of that. Of course, anywhere you get your uh, podcast, just search The Diamond K Show. And uh, I will be back uh, tomorrow, 
6 p.m. with another edition of the show. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget the best way to support what we do here at Radio on Fire is to become a member. It gives you access to the daily bonus show from yours truly, Don McKay, the regular show with no commercials. You also get access to our entire archive dating back to 2007 and plenty of other awesome perks like the On Fire Mix Show. You get bonus mixes, all of that. Go to joindiamondk.com. That is joindiamondk.com to get started and continue to help push this independent machine.